Has this ever happened to you? It's springtime and you're walking through a rural king and you're just looking around. And what do you hear in front of you? Peep, peep, peep. And what do you see? All those adorable baby chicks in all colors, shapes, and sizes. So what do you do? You grab a few, you pick up a feeder, you pick up a waterer, and you are all set. You on your way home to having the best poultry adventure ever. You're gonna get your kids involved in 4-H and they're gonna show their chickens at the fair. You are going to grow your very own high quality organic eggs. Well, is there anything you need to do? Of course there is. You need to make sure that you have a safe, clean, dry home for your chickens. And you also need to be very aware of biosecurity. Yes, a big biosecurity, it's a little scary, don't panic. It all involves you ensuring that your home and yard are safe for your chickens and that you are protecting other poultry owners in your community. So where are you going to get started? Well, first off, you're going to know your flock. Where did your chickens come from? If you bought them from Rural King, you might want to go in and talk to the manager. Find out. Where were they sourced from? Did they come from Georgia? Did they come from Florida? He can give you that kind of information. Did your birds have an immunization before you pick them up? Very important because even though these guys are very cute and very small, they are susceptible to a variety of poultry diseases. Um, okay, so let's take a look here at what we are going to do in order to ensure that our birds stay safe when they come home with us. We're going to look at some preventative health care. Uh, just like you need to have clean water and abundant food, so do your birds. Make sure you're washing that feeder out every, every day, washing the water, using some disinfectant to clean it, putting fresh clean water that you're providing vitamins and minerals for your birds. You might even want to try some supplements. Uh, you can grow some sprouts, quite popular among our poultry growers here in the county. Make sure that their home, the coop that you build for them, doesn't have to be fancy, but it does need to be clean, it needs to be dry, and very important here in Florida, it needs to be out of the sun. Do you see poultry, they don't sweat. Have you ever noticed? You don't see little poultry running around with little sweatbands on their head because they can't. They will sit with their mouth open or fluff themselves up to try to cool off. So be very aware about heat stress in your birds and be very aware of the soil where you're putting your birds. We you put that coop down because you might have something in your soil that you aren't aware of. So we know our flock, we know where it came from. We are engaged in preventative health care, ensuring that we're giving the best food that we can to our birds. You don't want to go to um, a local feed store and buy something that's been on the shelf for six or seven months and is kind of moldy and dusty. You don't want that for your birds something fresh, that would be ideal. Um, okay, as far as your cleanliness goes, make sure that you keep your coop clean. Just because your chicken lives outside does not mean that they should be living in their own waste. Have a regular program every day to go on out, sweep out, shovel out, keep the floors very clean, keep the walls cleaned down, you're going to want, like we said before, make sure you're replacing that feed and water every day, washing out those containers. Um, avoid sharing equipment. So maybe your kids are showing their poultry at the fair and they took the feeders and waterers with them. Well, you're not going to want to let someone else share your feeder without washing it after you get home. Sharing is great, but we don't want to share everything. Now, um, a good disinfectant that you might use, and a very cheap disinfectant, is bleach. Make sure you dilute it appropriately and that 
if you are a 4-H'er that you're letting your mom and dad give you assistance with that because bleach can kind of mess things up. Um, all right, now, so we've got preventative health care covered and we know how to keep our birds clean, but what about, what are those sources of infection? What should we be looking for to identify that's coming into our, into our yard? Well, of course, humans, yes, all those people, dirty, dirty people. They can make your birds very sick. So make sure they're washing their hands before they come and pick your bird up. Um, vehicles coming into your yard can cause a problem if they've come from somebody else's house that maybe they had a sick bird and didn't know about it. So keep cars and vehicles away from your coop. Other animals, domestic animals like dogs and cats or even wildlife. So make sure that your coop has an adequate fencing around it so that you keep all of that wildlife away. And of course, other people's birds. So you're going to want to be sure that people aren't traveling between your, your birds and their own birds. So real quick, we just want to touch on some of the signs of illness that you're going to be looking for in your birds. If your birds are sitting around and they're all puffy and their eyes are droopy, th there's something not wrong. You, again, you want to be knowing your flock all the time. You should be looking at them. And very importantly, if you do have a sick bird, don't just ignore it. Call your veterinarian, call your poultry superintendent, and very important, call your local IFAS Extension office. They can offer you help or they can tell you where you might go to get those kinds of resources. We have a wide variety of publications available here at the Extension Office. So go ahead and give me a call. I'm Marnie Ward, the 4-H agent at the Extension Office and poultry lover extraordinaire.